Oh, they're going to be out there on this fabulous flaky Friday. I mean, they're all going to be out there. All those familiar, fun of fun of people voices, people with their problems and so forth. Okay, we'll simply open the doors to Ward 8 and continue at 546-5478. This call is next, I believe. Hello? Hello, Bob. Yes, sir. Say, uh, what are you, overjoyed because we're losing in Vietnam? I didn't say that. No, you always act like it. No, I didn't say that. Simply no, said you that... didn't say that, but... No, I didn't... Like no, I'm not overjoyed that... We're losing. You're not overjoyed that the commies are taking over over there, huh? Well, it's been a civil war over there, and I'm glad that it's going to be settled one way or the other. You're glad to see the commies win, then. No, I said I'm glad that it's going to be settled one way or the other. Why don't you ever criticize the communists? Well, I think I have. Oh, baloney. Well, what do you want me to do? Say, let's drop the bomb on, on Moscow tomorrow morning, or let's invade Cuba? What, what do you want me to say? Or be it for me to put words in your mouth, Bob. That's right, and you're not. Right? Never. In some parts of the country, two-way talk radio has made it big. Places like New York and Cleveland and L.A., where it gets huge audiences and lots of advertisers. But here in the Twin Cities, it never really caught on. WLOL tried it for a while, found that mostly old people were listening, finally dropped it when sponsors lost interest. Today, the only local station doing talk radio is tiny KUXL in Golden Valley. KUXL is a hodgepodge of religious programs, ethnic music, Dr. Carl McIntyre, Liberty Lobby, and six afternoons a week, two-way talk. With some announcers, the talk is generally tame, sometimes tedious. But with Bob Allard, who's been doing it here and elsewhere for over 15 years, it often turns into a mixture of soap opera, slapstick, and barroom brawl. Why are you so afraid of reading something... Why are you so... Bit more hey, look, we can't, than you do. we can't both talk at the same time. Now, if you want to go on for 30 seconds and I won't interrupt, fine, but then I want you to shut up and let me come back for at least 15. Now, is that fair enough? Bob, don't tell me to shut up because you could get your mouth closed for That's something. right. I'm right down here at KUXL, That's 5730 right. Duluth Street. When do, you want, when do you want to come down? We have a number of communicasters of various political beliefs, but overall we look for a balance. With Bob Allard, he happens to be a little bit more liberal. And uh, we feel, too, that that's fine because the audience, the listening audience, responds and presents the other balance. They call in and challenge him. He, therefore, challenges, challenges those people that call in, and as a result, we get balance. What makes good talk radio? Or any kind of radio? Okay, for what it's worth, maybe in one word, and the word is empathy. Empathy. Now, Big Daddy WCCO at 830 does it seven days a week with informational empathy. W-A-Y-L does it on the FM side with, with music. Do it superbly. With empathy. Talk radio. 24 karat empathy. And empathy is a simple word. It simply means a communication between thee and me. That understanding, that feel, that something. If you have it, fine. If you don't, forget it. I, I, I never forget a voice, baby. Oh, really? Never forget a voice. I mean, I, especially the flakies. Really? And today is one of those fabulous Friday, Friday flakies. Uh, you can sit there, dear, and call everybody flaky, right? I wasn't calling you flaky. I'm simply saying I never forget a voice. Many of the voices, of course, are familiar, but they're all familiar of a type. And you simply listen, you hear what's going on in their minds. And many of the people who call talk radio, and studies have borne this out, many of the people who talk, call talk radio have problems. I don't mean serious problems. Many of them are simply lonely or maybe a psychiatric safety valve. Again, if you know what you're doing, it beats a couch. My name is Fred Abrahamson. I'm in the funeral business, and I have been a listener and caller to talk radio stations ever since their inception, I believe. You, you know, uh, some people are afraid to speak the, what they really believe in because they're afraid someone else will uh, maybe ostracize them or castigate them for it. But so what? Uh, I don't wear it. Some people even criticize me for wearing the cross. They say the cross, that's not something that's pretty. And I say, well, it is because the Lord isn't on it anymore. He's, he's living, and because he lives, I too shall live. And I, even being in the funeral business, I don't fear death. You know, it was only about four years ago, right outside our establishment here, I lay in the casket and gave out little Bibles. Because Jesus said, he that liveth and believeth in me will never die. Please, let's not get into the religious thing, okay? You want me to talk about... No, just as soon, you know, because I just don't want to get into the religious thing, okay? No, I don't want to get into religion. I mean, I've asked you before if you're a religious nut, and I can't recall what the answer was. What was that? 
I said, would you consider yourself a religious nut? Well, I believe in Jesus. If that makes me a freak, I guess I am. Okay, Fred, I've got to let you go, but I want to keep this in mind with you. Coming up the 1st of May, Madeline Murray O'Hare. I'm sure that you'll enjoy that. Hey, hey, that's... Uh, that's, uh, that's May Day. Huh? That's May Day, right. That's the red, the red holiday, isn't it? Well, it is to some people. Uh, certainly means nothing to Madeline Murray O'Hare. Yeah, this is Law Day here. And you... Okay, Bob, we'll see ya. Okay, it's the law, and that, of course, is according to the, uh, beyond the United uh, States Bob, Supreme Court. Bob, beyond the Supreme Court, you can appeal vertically to the Almighty, right? I can hardly wait for the verdict to get in. I'd always heard that the lonely and the old listen to talk radio. I disagree. I think it is extroverts that listen, uh, people who have no one listening. The world has become cold and impersonal. And here is your chance to get your views across, to share your values. I love it. In some cases, people listen to talk radio almost because it's masochistic. I mean, they want to hear what that son of a gun is going to say next. You know, what is he going to re really say today? Uh, sometimes people like to be sort of verbally whipped a little bit. Other times, they like to listen because they agree with what you say. I mean, he's saying what I want to say. Uh, many times it's simply for entertainment. I'm just asking you that question. Now, let's, let's get the answer to that question, then we'll go on from there, because a lot of people, a lot of those funny, flaky people who maybe just love Reverend Carl McIntyre and they want to kill a commie for Christ and that sort of jazz, uh, were shouting, let's win the war, and some of them, would you believe that some of them said, let's drop the bomb? I never heard anyone say, let's drop the bomb. Well, I heard them say it many, many times. I still haven't got my point across. What I wanted to say, and I'm afraid you're going to lose a lot of people by your very fact that you keep interrupting what they've got to say. I'm going to try not to. Uh, you know, I would do just about anything and skip anything to hear Bob Allard on, on Friday, on his Flaky Friday show. Just about anything, almost anything. I sometimes think that you think you're a master of ceremonies at your own conception, Bob. My own conception? Yes. All right. Just use your sort of your, your bedroom voice, speaking of that. Honey, if I uh, used my bedroom voice, you wouldn't be able to handle me. Come on now, Bob. You always think everything has to uh, come right down to sex, right? Well, we're not I talking didn't, about... I didn't bring it up. I mean, I... Robert, I... Believe me, I've never met you, but... Uh, but I almost know what, what you are like. We're right. not talking about sex now. We are talking about vital issues. All afternoon, people were talking about Vietnam, right? At least you were listening all afternoon. Yes, I was listening and doing my floors and polishing my furniture and running up and down three flights, uh, uh, three floors in this house. Yes, I was listening. Oh, boy, that exercise must keep you youthful and slim. Oh, it does, dear. I have a beautiful figure. Well, tell me about it. I once told Jim I'm like I was at 20. I may not sound it, my voice, but believe me, I do have a girlish figure. You do, you do. And a beautiful long ponytail. I see. How old are you? Uh, two years older than you. A 50-year-old ponytail? Yes. Good luck. And sometimes it gets piled on top of my head. I'll bet it does. I've got to move. Goodbye, Bob. Bye-bye. Ooh, they're out there. People call up just to be argumentative, and while a little bit of that goes a long way, a little bit of it does help. Makes the program a lot more interesting. And based on what I said earlier, that people like an argument, it, it really does help the programming efforts a lot here. You do talk radio for about 15, 16 years, such as I have. Frankly, you get a little bit neurotic. You get sort of like a verbal Bobby Fisher. Uh, you start dialoguing with yourself in the shower. You know, you start listening to old tapes at times. You know, here's where you should have come in. After a few years, of course, you pretty much know all of the standard moves, and you're trying to improve in some of the other ones. We are now facing the ignominy and the embarrassment and the shame of uh, having all of that uh, and the blood of 55,000 of our boys uh, come down upon their ears. The SOBs, they ought to have been all shot before they started this no-win war, including Senator Humphrey. Well, what do you mean, these people who propagated the war? You mean all those people who voted for the... Now, hold it. Are you, are you in favor of shooting all those people who voted for the Gulf of Tonkin resolution? I am in favor of shooting all, the, all of them guys that uh, started this war when in the back of their mind they had reservations that they didn't want to win it. 
It's just some kind of a, uh, an adventure, like Hubert Humphrey said. I could start a good revolution myself. Okay, that's just about where we came in. Good luck to you, John, and have a nice weekend, too. They're really out there. My name is Donald B. Brulard, and I work at the Minneapolis Star and Tribune, and I've been listening to talk radio uh, ever since it's been on the air in this area. Uh, and I take Bob Allard. Uh, he's way, way out in left field. He's always talking about his little pink ear. His mind is made up on everything that he talks about. Nobody can change his mind. But when I call him, my object is not in trying to change his mind, but to influence the listeners who are listening whose minds aren't made up already. The only trouble with that is uh, if he comes out in the best of the argument, well, then people might be influenced to think, well, hey, Bob Allard's right, and he isn't. He's left. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> What is it? Have you noticed? I mean, have you noticed? I mean, over the months, and I suppose over the years, uh, the only people who get uptight about guns, taking those guns away, are, are men. American males have something with that, that gun that they worry about. Obviously, I would approve of nothing less than taking the guns away. Well, let's, let me tell you something, Mr. Allard. I have a gun. I'll bet you do. And I'll tell you this. I want to see the day that you come around to take that gun away from me. Where do you live? I can guarantee you, my friend, that I'll meet you and I'll have something in my hand. I'll bet you will. not be my penis. I beg your pardon. Now, I'll tell you that for sure. Listening to you in the past, too, regard to your uh, approval of gay rights and that, all that, I... How do we get from guns to gay rights in the state of Massachusetts? I mean, uh, it's an... Uh, go ahead. Well... I mean, do you have some sort of a hang-up? I certainly have, and it, the, the name of my hang-up is Boob Allard. Well, that stands to reason. Thanks for calling. Good luck. He just left. I might say sometimes you get peculiar feelings. It's almost nice to walk out of the studio at the end of a show knowing that certain people hate you. <laughs> Several minority families would take over your home and property, kick you off. What are you talking about, my dear? I mean, are you a little bit flaky on this fabulous Friday? Exactly I mean, as is being done in Vietnam now. How would you uh, like that? Just, just a minute. I mean, you, you seem to have some problems here, but I'm, I'm glad that you came to Uncle Bob on a Friday, okay? Mr. Hitler and Just, please, my dear, just settle down a little bit. I want to ask you a question. I, believe me, I'm going to let you free associate and ask questions and so forth, but... I really call no, Hold it. Now, just a minute. Why is it so difficult for me to get a singular word in edgewise? Well, because you I'm, cut me off. I'm not going to... Believe me, I wouldn't cut you off. 